From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, Today, I have a very special guest. You know, I have this radio show, but it's also a podcast. And uh, on my podcast page, uh, it shows me the shows that are the most popular. And my number one most popular podcast is with my son, Dave Altizer, who's also a YouTube uh, personality. And so I'm excited that I've got my number one podcast star with me today, my son, Dave Altizer. Dave, welcome to the show. Hola. Hello. Hey, and uh, glad to have you here. And uh, last time he was here, we talked about uh, YouTube and kind of what's happening on YouTube. We're going to talk a little bit today about about his YouTube channel and, and what's been happening with him there. We're also going to talk about uh, podcasting and some some interesting uh, things that are possibly might be coming up with him regarding podcasting. But uh, let's start off with your YouTube channel. Last time we were here, you were talking about YouTube and you'd been looking into YouTube. But since then... You now have a, a company that you're working with and a YouTube channel, and you've actually become quite a, a bit of a, a, a YouTube personality. People know who you are, and your YouTube channel is getting popular. And, of course, as a dad, I'm kind of proud of that. But why don't you talk a little bit about what you've been doing uh, with your YouTube channel? Sure. YouTube channel's name is Kinotika, spelled K-I-N-O-T-I-K-A, if anybody's interested in looking at it. But we do camera reviews, and um, we specifically focus on photographers and filmmakers and just review equipment, and that's all we do. It's very niche, but we're really having a lot of fun with it, trying really hard to be creative. And the biggest thing that I've learned over the last couple of months with doing YouTube is consistency is the most important thing when it comes to being successful on YouTube. If you put out five videos in one week, but nothing for three weeks, that's worse than doing one a week for five weeks straight. So we are trying really hard to continually put out at least two videos a week on our channel. I have another shooter. His name is Connor McCaskill, who is working with me. He's editing with me. He's a good friend, and you're friends with him as well. And uh, so, yeah, we're just, Connor and I are trucking along here and just doing reviews of cameras. Now, is it just cameras, or are you doing other things other than just cameras? Yeah, cameras, camera-related accessories, like we we did a whole series on gimbals, video gimbals, things that can stabilize your camera and give you cinematic shots or lenses, you know, different things like that. Just camera accessories and cameras in general. Drones. I've seen you do some drone things. And yeah. Stuff. So you, you do a video uh, on, let's say, like we're talking about a lens. Okay. So you do, you do a video on a lens. What would that look like? And what would you go about? How would you go about putting something like that together? And how long does that video usually go for? Well, we try to shoot for around 10 minutes for all our videos, maybe longer or shorter, depending on what I'm talking about. But I like to think of ways to do reviews that nobody else has done before and I I like to just get a little bit creative with it so for example we did a review kind of like what you're saying but I made a spoof about the office and I dressed up like the character from the office and acted a little goofy and did the review inside of that Um, you know but at the end of the day sometimes when we're trying to just do two videos a week we just need to crank it out and get it done So for a lens review, we would go somewhere, maybe a pretty location or a park, and I would actually use the the piece of equipment. And it's really funny, like the spec sheet of a certain piece of equipment isn't as interesting maybe, but then once you use it, you find out that it's actually really great or vice versa. Maybe it looks great on paper, but when you use it, it's terrible and it falls apart or you know it's just really complicated to use so using it hands-on is the first thing and then we go back to the office and look at the footage if it's a camera and see you know what the light and the color looks like or the sharpness of the lens or whatever and then we'll talk about a lot of those nerdy kind of details but we try to keep it enjoyable entertaining you know every two seconds we're doing something whether adding b-roll or a sound effect or a text or you know, cutting to something interesting because we find that after two to four seconds, if I'm just sitting there and talking, people just don't watch it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so you're uh, you're making these videos. You're you're adding lots of edits and cuts and content every two to four seconds. You have something happening. You're not just sitting there talking in a camera. Mm-hmm. You know, every two to that's quite a bit in a ten minute video. That's quite a bit of edits. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we've we've dialed it down now. Connor and I have been working together for about six months. And he started out pretty fresh. I mean, he had some editing skills, and I definitely saw, you know, he has a talent for what he does. But once we kind of figured out a workflow, I've just been real impressed with Connor, who mostly edits the videos now. I just kind of do the finishing touches. And we can shoot and edit a whole video in two days. So if we only have to do two videos a week, that's four days of work, you know. Excellent. Excellent. Now, you started this video, uh, this this YouTube uh, channel, Kino Tika, uh, is hiring you to do a YouTube channel. And uh, so you kind of started from scratch with nothing. Mm-hmm. And now you're becoming quite popular. You, you just went to VidCom and people are recognizing you. You're kind of in that little world, that camera gear review world. You're kind of becoming a known entity. So talk to us about creating a YouTube channel from zero, which is kind of where we were when we had our last interview, Mm -hmm. to now a YouTube channel that there are thousands and thousands of subscribers Mm -hmm. and you're getting views and sometimes, you know, you know, six figure number of people watching your your YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. So how did you get from, you know, our last interview to here? What -hmm. what changed? What were some of the specifics for people who might want to do their own YouTube channel? uh, Some things that could help them. Well, I've always heard the uh, the overnight success story of, you know, for example, there's a band called Fun, and they're a great band. And I remember I heard them, they had a big hit, and then I told you about them, you're like, oh yeah, I've known about them for like 10 years. And I said, what? I just heard about them, and they have this big hit on the radio, and you were like, yeah, I mean, they've been working really hard for 10 years to get to the point to where most people know who they are now. And it's just, it's like that. I mean, I've been doing videos and performing also for 10 years, almost, you know, maybe more if you include my experience when I was a magician. A lot of people don't know this, but I used to be a professional illusionist, a magician. Like seriously, I would actually do shows and perform in front of people every week when I was a teenager in high school and in college. And I always felt like that skill set was kind of going to waste when I started doing video because I was behind the camera so much. And so now that I'm doing YouTube, I'm really combining those skills that I've built over more than a decade of my life with performing and filmmaking. And those things are really helping the channel. You know, some actual practical things in terms of just starting fresh without that 10 years of experience. I'm, I'm giving that as a caveat because... If you watch, you know, some of our first videos, they're, you know, they're actually pretty good because of that experience that I have. So I'm not starting new with video or performing. So that's a big aspect to why it's successful. But if you're starting completely from scratch, the best advice that I could give is just do it. You know, one of the first things that people think of is, well, I need to make sure that I have a good idea of what it is and make sure everything's all lined up and I cross all my T's and dot all my I's and have a good camera and have a good lighting, have a good set, have a good script. You know, I just, I really feel like once you start doing this kind of thing, it kind of morphs and changes as you do it. I had an idea of what this channel was supposed to be when I first started, but I feel like just even in six months, the the channel has changed and morphed because we it's a social network it's not just distributing content and letting people see it people are responding to the videos and they're saying hey why don't you do this why don't you review this thing or it was really funny when you did that or i was really annoyed when you did that and so i'm actually getting feedback from people and morphing and changing what i'm doing based off of what people are reacting to and it's a lot of fun because it's like a fluid you know kind of way to make video. So just go out and do it and you'll be surprised that people will say, "Ah, oh, you know what? That was a little boring when you talked about that thing, but I loved it when you did this thing. So for your next video, do only that thing. And, uh, instead of just editing it, sitting there and thinking, Hmm, should I cut this thing out or leave it? I don't know. Like just go with your instincts, you know, just do what you want to do 
But then you'll actually see, instead of sitting there for weeks trying to perfect your videos, just put it out. And the great thing is, is if that video is bad, just make another one. Don't delete it. Don't start from scratch. Just put it out and move on to the next one. And that's one of the biggest things that I've heard from big YouTubers. They say you really have to figure out where good enough is and let it be as is and then just go to the next one. Because, you know, with any type of art form, you could that you can get to 80, 90 percent quality, <laughs> but then that extra 10, 20 percent takes a lot of time and just a lot of effort. And with this type of medium that I'm doing, not distributing a movie to a theater or whatever, just going on the internet, it's okay to only be 80% quality, you know? Well, you're doing two videos a week. You know, it's, it's a, uh, you're listening to the Rick Altizer show. My guest today is my son, Dave Altizer. He is a YouTube personality and we're talking about his YouTube channel. We're also going to be talking about, uh, podcasting as well. Um, but so, so, so what I'm hearing some, some, for people who are thinking about maybe doing this, you're, you're talking about uh, twice a week, you need to put something out. Uh, it's better to have something regular, ongoing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to have uh, something that is, uh, has some kind of entertaining value to it, which, which you do with your, your podcast. It's fun. It's up. It's a lot of energy. Um, and also, every two to four seconds, have something happen, a sound, have a cut, have an edit, uh, a B-roll shot. Don't just stand there and look at the camera and let that be it. So, Well, I I would like to make a note on that. That's for me. That's for my audience. My audience is a 70% 20-year-old to 30-year-old audience. It's a 90% male audience. Um, And that fluctuates and changes. If, If you're a woman, for example, who wants to start a company selling products, or about uh, knit, knitting or something like that, right? I mean, that is a market. There's women who love to knit and they will buy books and tutorials and love to learn about new techniques of knitting. Maybe sitting in one chair for 30 minutes knitting an object is good enough for that audience because they want to follow along with you as you're knitting. So it's it it's a fluid thing. It depends on your audience. For my audience, we've found that they respond better to quick cuts. That can sound overwhelming for someone who's never edited before. And I don't want to discourage anyone hmm. who maybe wants to start a channel who says, well, that sounds like, you know, that's, again, that's the 10 years of my experience coming into play there. If you are just starting out and you have something valuable to talk about, it is okay to sit there and talk about it. And if you have 20 people watching, that's 20 people that are that are watching. I mean, you know, so it just really depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a kid channel, for example, and you're talking about toys or video games or whatever, yeah, you you got to be fast. You got to be entertaining because those kids just need that, you know. Uh, my audience is a little bit younger, so they tend to respond better to quicker cuts and things. But if you're a mechanic and, you know, there, there's, a, there's this guy who has like 6 million followers and all he does is review cars and basically what he does is he sets a camera up and he stands next to the car he's reviewing and he talks for an hour and he gets millions of views on those videos but it's because the value of what he's saying is important to people so i I, you know there's no hard rules here i just was sharing what we what we do okay great well i'm well no thanks for clarifying that because not everybody's going to need to have those quick cuts, like you mm-hmm. said, someone discussing knitting, maybe you're fine just filming yourself knitting and talking about it as you're knitting, yeah. doing a voiceover or something. And basically what's happening right now is say you're watching a TV show, you know, CSI or whatever, commercial hits on television. What's the first thing people do? They they go to Facebook, they go to Instagram. They're, people are spending billion, you know, Coke, uh, you know, Pepsi, Jeep, these people are spending $90 billion a year on television commercials that nobody's watching. Everybody goes to their phone or they skip the commercials with a DVR. So the great thing about right now in 2018 is that the attention that you have on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube is extremely high. And the price point to get those viewers' attention is extremely low because Coke, Jeep, Honda, 
Pepsi, the, you know, the Forbes 500 haven't, they haven't figured it out yet. They're, they're still living in the past of these marketing structures. Once Coke figures this out and they start pouring into Facebook marketing and YouTube and Instagram, the price point for us, people who are starting now is going to go through the roof to market to those people because Coke's going to spend $20 billion on marketing on Facebook. And so the value that's going to go up and down. But like right now we're in a really exciting time because we're still at that point where corporate America has not shifted yet. The people who are running those companies are in their fifties and sixties and they just, they didn't grow up with this yet. So they're, it doesn't have value to them, to them having a television ad is more valuable than having an Instagram ad, even though the Instagram ad is probably a more successful business strategy. That's interesting. And, you know, some of my listeners here uh, who listen on the radio, uh, as opposed to the podcast listeners, the radio listeners, you know, might not be understanding, well, what is, what, what's a YouTube channel? What's a, what, you know, and so I uh, advise you to figure out how to get a podcast. You can go to rickaltizer.com and you can listen there. You can listen to our last interview where uh, Dave did talk about YouTube and kind of what it is and why it's becoming like a new TV, basically. But I'd like to transition if we can. Um, and I, again, you're listening to the Rick Altizer Show. My guest is my son, Dave Altizer. He is a YouTube uh, personality, has a very popular channel there, and he's also transitioning over into podcasting. I have a podcast. This is a radio show, first and foremost, and then I take my radio show and I make it a podcast. But for some of my radio listeners who might not They've heard about the podcast, and I'm sure most of them are pretty up to speed. But talk a little bit about podcasts, what you like about them, and uh, what what you kind of see, first off, about the importance of a podcast. Absolutely. Well, we're it's kind of a meta thing, because if somebody's listening to this on a podcast, then hello, this is a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, podcasts have been around for a very long time. The word podcast comes from iPod, which came from Apple in iTunes. They had a feature called podcasting and people like um, Leo Laporte and others have been doing podcasts now ever since the iPod came out. Leo Laporte, is a, he's a guy in uh, San Francisco. He's got all these podcasts about technology and they just talk about tech and he's been doing this forever. And so there is a following of people who've been around for a while, but in the past you had to basically go on your computer, plug your, your iPod into your computer and it would download podcasts, like physically download it onto the device. And then you would, you know, unplug your, your, your iPod and you could listen to it, you know, throughout your day or whatever. But it wasn't until the cellular connection speeds got to a point where you can stream uh, audio in high quality on demand that podcasts kind of took off. So the last five, six, seven years or so when the phone's speed of internet increased, podcasting became just this huge medium. And if you're not aware, there's some podcasts that have millions of listeners every week. I mean, we're talking numbers in the range of Good Morning America or something like that. I mean, it's really remarkable. And people are calling it the new golden age of audio because... You can't watch TV. You can't be on your phone on Facebook or Instagram when you're working out. You can't do that when you're doing the dishes. You can't watch a video when you're walking the dog. You can't, you know, be on Instagram while you're driving to work. But you can listen to audio when you're doing all those things. When you're taking a shower, when you're making your breakfast and you're walking the dog, driving to work. Maybe you're doing emails and you can listen to something while you're doing your emails. There's just so much passive consumption of audio right now because of the phones. And so that's what's really exciting about the podcasting world. It's kind of almost like going back to the Orson Welles, you know, War of the Worlds era where there was no television and so people got very creative with audio. If you don't if you don't know about Orson Welles, he, you know, did War of the Worlds and people heard this story it was a fictional story of space you know aliens coming to earth and destroying the planet and people actually thought it was real because they were not used to fiction being on the radio 
So we're having a lot of that right now with narrative podcasts, you know, documentary type podcasts, but then also just conversational ones like this. A lot of celebrities will do podcasts and it's almost better to listen to a podcast with Paul McCartney for two hours than watch him on Jimmy Kimmel because in a two hour conversation, a host can ask some really personal questions. You really kind of, it's just a much more laid back environment. So it's, it's a really interesting time right now for audio. And uh, so, yeah, I I got hired by a company um, who does camera stuff and um, I'm going to be doing a podcast myself uh, with other filmmakers and photographers. And I've been really toying with the idea of having one myself, but because this company is paying me to do it, I obviously am doing that instead of doing it on my own. Maybe I'll do my own later, but it's just another great avenue for someone who has a presence online to have a presence with podcasting because my audience on YouTube can only watch me on YouTube. But now all the people who follow me on YouTube who are interested in what I have to say can now consume my content while they're in the car driving to work or while they're making their breakfast. And it's easy to listen to a podcast on my little iPhone. There's a little podcast app. You press it and you just you go there and, and you just type in Rick Altizer show, boom, up comes my podcast. So I'm putting this in for my mom, your grandma. She's gonna go, How can I listen to this? You know, how can I listen to your podcast? So Yeah, well she needs more than one gigabyte of internet to listen to your podcast. <laughs> I was just with my dad's mom, my grandma, and she burns through one gigabyte of data in a week, and that's all she has. So um, she doesn't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> but um, another great thing about podcasting is you can double speed it, so you can listen to it in two x. Uh, you know, so you can actually hear people talk. And if you're if you're good enough to listen that way, my wife can't do it. She has to listen in normal speed. But I like to listen in usually one point five x speed. And it's great because you can listen to an hour long podcast in 30 minutes. You know, people sound really fast. And of course, if somebody were to listen in on what you're listening to, it would sound kind of crazy. But if you're focused enough, you know, while I'm driving, sometimes I'll listen in double speed just to get through an hour long podcast. And you had an app. Uh, Tell me about the app you were were showing me today. Yeah, it's called Overcast and it's available on Android and uh, iPhone. I believe, I believe Android. But what's great about it is the guy that is the developer of the app has his own podcast. He has multiple podcasts. He's actually a very well-known podcaster. So um, the app is really user-friendly, really designed for podcast. I mean, it is designed for podcasts. And uh, I I find it better than the Apple one for sure. So Overcast. Overcast, yeah. It's it's free. it It can play, speed it up. It can. It takes out silence. You know, it's really interesting that, yeah. that what they can do now. But uh, and so, what do you plan to do with your your new podcast that you're going to be working on? What will that be? It's going to be a podcast about f- filmmakers and photographers. They'll come in on the show, and it'll be kind of like a variety show. Um, but we'll also review equipment similar to what I'm doing now. Any news that's going on? Say, there's a new drone that just came out. I would probably you know, have 10 minutes of just talking about the drone with the person that's with me and ask personal questions about people. It's just kind of for people who are in my industry, there's nothing like it. There's not a variety show that's just entertaining to listen to. Uh, That's really all we're going for is just an entertaining show with guests who do filmmaking and photography. It's like a talk radio show, similar to what I'm doing here, Exactly. except for I have a 30-minute limitation. I have a 30-minute show, so if I have a guest, uh, many times I'll have a guest and we keep we want to talk more, and so at that point, I'll have to do part two of my show, mm-hmm. uh, but whereas a podcast, there's no time limit. Exactly, and we're also going to do a YouTube live with that as well, so that'll be a really fun aspect as well on that. We can have people commenting while we're doing the show live, so say we open it up for Q&A, we can actually have guests ask the guest literal questions live. And That's so, amazing. So talk a little bit about how people can find out more about you and how they can listen to your, uh, up, find out info about the podcast when it's available and, and also your, uh, your YouTube channel. Sure. Like I said earlier in the show, the YouTube channel that I'm working for is called Kino Tika. It's spelled K-I-N-O-T-I-K-A. And the podcast is not out yet. We don't even have a name for it yet. It's still kind of under development, but we will begin that in October. If you want to just keep up with those things, I would recommend following me on Twitter at Dave Altizer. It's D-A-V-E-A-L-T-I-Z-E-R, spelled just like 
the title of this show, Rick That's Altizer. That's right. And you've been listening to the Rick Altizer Show. And Dave, thank you so much for being on the show. I always love it when I have my son on. My pleasure. Everybody go start a YouTube channel. Do it now. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.